Welcome to Wavelengths Undercover, the micro podcast where we talk to people from companies who either resell, rebrand, or integrate our technology into their platforms. My guest today is Brian Matthews from Phoenix, so we will be talking about all things cloud. Hi, Brian. Welcome. Welcome to Wavelengths Undercover. Thank you so much for being my guest. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. I'm happy to be here. It's nice to have a chat, although I'm you know, we're used to chatting this from public now, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, let's introduce you to our listeners and our watchers. Um, Brian Matthews, tell us who you are and what you do for Phoenix and how you got there. I want to learn a little bit about your background. Yeah. So uh, Brian Matthews, I'm director of sales at Phoenix. I've been here seven years now. Um, actually, it'll be just in about a month or so. I've been in security about one, oh, sorry, 17 years, I think it is, or 18 years now. Don't hold that part against me. Yeah, I, I, it's always been a pet peeve of mine when someone says, I've been doing this for 20 years. And I'm like, well, oh, have you learned anything along the way? <laughs> so I was like, I always like to try to challenge myself with new things, new challenges, and learn new technologies. And it's kind of what got me to Phoenix. I mean, I started in security in 2003 when just being on Windows and integrating video was like this revolutionary thing. And I didn't get it coming out of college. I'm like, hey, I've been using Windows for 10 years now. Why is this new in security? But, you know, I had no other experience outside of college and other jobs and no experience in security. So it's just, you know, it was that repetitive theme. Like you've, you know, we've probably seen it now, you know, specific to wavelengths and mobile credentials. How long have they been around? You know, and just the user adoption, getting through the channel, I mean, we saw it with panels, you know, Mercury first put a panel with a native, you know, 10, 100 ethernet connection, RJ45 on it, like 2005. And you'd have, oh, we can't put this on the network. It's not safe. And all of those things. And, you know, in my last employer, it, they were great, great to work for. And I loved what I was doing. But in 2014, I kind of looked at around and said, you know, we've been using cloud and we've been using our phones forever now. Our banking had been online for a decade. You know, we can, you know, if I lose a bet to you, I can Venmo you or PayPal you money in, you know, seconds from my phone. And we, know, we don't have to worry about cybersecurity around that, you know, encryption, redundancy, all those things are there. And that kind of got me thinking when Phoenix had started calling at first, I kind of said, hey, I'm not really. I said, well, come and meet us, you know, see what we're doing. You know, we're, we're really going after enterprise access control and that's the space I came from, but obviously on-prem. And, you know, I, I started looking at, you know, probably like you did going to Wavelengths and doing some of these new things, you're going, man, like, that's the problem with security. We always were an eminence-based domain. Like, this is how it's always been done, rather than looking at, well, where's the evidence? Where's, where's the IT market? Where's the consumer market going? And you know, it, it, it's gone to our hand, really. And Now so, more than ever. Uh. Yeah. And those were all those things that really got me to leave a very good, a very safe job that I had just moved walking distance from the office in a new house. And, you know, got me to all those things kind of came together. It's like, hmm, man, I, there goes that dream of walking to the office, you know. Um, but yeah, where, just, where, so where, are you, where are you located? So I'm out of Rochester, New York, or Pittsburgh more specifically on, on the outskirts. So the part of New York that's closer to Canada than New York City. I'm familiar. You and I have a few things in common, actually, having both, you know, been in the industry for, for quite some period of time, you know, you would probably agree, we've been saying the same, throwing around the same coined terms, you know, open, interoperable, we've been saying these things for 20 yeah. years, but those definitions have changed slightly. Thankfully, now more than ever, um, I've had the experience of, of, of working with some companies like you, enterprise, yeah. you know, enterprise traditional models and, and now being able to work in an environment that really is shifting the landscape. Um, what you're doing with cloud is, is really exciting and it really truly is changing and shifting um, what we can provide as solutions and really, like you said, get things more, uh, more up to date. We know it's a bit of a, a slow moving industry. So having come from that background, now you're, you, you were introduced to Phoenix cloud-based enterprise access control, um, a whole new conversation to have with customers, very attractive value proposition. A couple of things I'd love for you to touch on with us. Well, first and foremost, just 
so I get it out of the way. How about the Wavelengths partnership? How did you first decide to bring Wavelengths products, readers and credentials under the Phoenix umbrella? What does it mean to you? And maybe share with us a couple of success stories. Yeah, so I, I think we really looked at a couple of things and this, my memory is never as good as I'd like it to be. So I'm trying to remember like how I got started, but I think we're just between the discussions and you know, you guys really sort of pushing leaf, pushing interoperability, um, you know, making it easy to get a credential, um, that the process, the being easy to work with, it I think it was a culmination of those things. I can't say it's, it was any one of those things, um, but that in kind of getting back to what we're going for, like open ecosystem, non-proprietary, you know, again, OSDP. So we're, you know, we're, we support OSDP. Of course, we all support Wigan, but just in terms of a lot, you know, how you talk about those things and where, you know, just even doing key sharing. And I know that's not something that'll get widely adopted, but it's very important for some people making that process easy to do sort of customer facing and that, hey, anyone can do it rather than, you know, a lot of just, you know, secrets and magic, you know, so to speak is like, hey, here's our process. This is how we do it. It's very clear. That's refreshing and you control it. You own it. It's your key. Because it can be overwhelming. It's one little corner of the market, especially one corner of what our, you know, your cha our channel partners, the integrators, when they're selling and installing and designing the systems, you know, the, the access uh, components is just one piece. So it can be very overwhelming to understand the encryption, you know, on the cards and when to make what decision. And then when we're throwing mobile into the mix. So when you talk about owning keys, um, not being adopted by everyone, I think that's actually changing as well. The easier we make it to comprehend and the easier we make it to adopt, um, it's just a no-brainer for an end user to have that power to own their keys. But I also know, um, and thank you for mentioning these because that is an important part to our portfolio, but there's a couple of really cool things that are happening with our partnership. It's not just as simple as Phoenix reselling Wavelengths readers, yeah. you've actually rebranded um, you've rebranded our readers with your logo on it. So that's definitely a huge commitment. And of course, the topic of mobile is massive. So tell us a little bit about your approach to mobile, your philosophy on mobile credentials, how Wavelengths, Wavelengths is maybe helping you with that, but really tell us about, um, I know that you've got some thoughts on the, on the future of mobile as well. So about like everyone else I've got an opinion so you know you, you can turn me off when you need to um, but yeah so one of the things that I, I like you know from the just the partnership the technology perspective is one is how easy it is to get away from mobile credentials so we could start with hey we've got a reseller agreement we have a business commitment partnership in place and customers can immediately benefit from that because they can they can get a wavelengths reader that we've used we've tested they can go get the credential and it's kind of neat because in that case, the issuance process is flipped. The user gets the credential. They walk into security. Here's my number. Puts it in up to our system. It's going to work. You're going to swipe, use your credential, the reader. So there's nothing that either of us needed to do to get that started, get integrators trying it. So then that next step, of course, is simplifying the issuance process. So, hey, we just hired Sarah. Now we're going to push that number out to her. We're already going to have it. And it's just going to, it's going to make it one one last thing that you'll have to do. So the the neat, like I think, you know, as, as I look at it, and the, the the philosophical part of mobile credentials and security is traditionally security is always looked in. We limit the number of people. We want to limit who gets in the building. We want to limit who can consume the system. You know, your normal interaction with a you know with a car or with the system was always a card or a key fob. That was it. And then something beeped at you. Or, or it blinked and, you know, hey, that was, that's how most, you know, 99% of the population interacts with their access control system. So now when we move to mobile credentials and, you know, we start this partnership off, we, you've got a great API, makes it really easy to work, um, at least from what our engineers tell me, and I trust them on that. So it, it's helped them. So now I say, well, great, we've got this thing we can put into the hands of the, the consumer other than a piece of plastic. So what else can we do with that? Um, and it starts with really little things. Well, maybe we want to do hard plus pin. 
well, how did you do a pin code with your, with a traditional system? I walk into security, you know, someone, someone gives me their keyboard and I type in my pin code or, or they do it. And then they tell me the pin code, which isn't really secure, you know? So there's a couple of people that sort of probably know it. So that, that becomes one of those things where well, you just enter it from, from an app. Um, I might be able to update my photo, all those other things that I always had to go in, or maybe, you know, even part of the evolution, you still have that piece of plastic in your hand. Well, what do you, what did you do when you lost it previously? And most of us lost it on the weekend or somewhere and you're, oh, well, you know, a lot of our badges have the number of who to call, just like our credit cards, but well, I don't, I'm not in possession of it anymore. So who do I call? You call your manager, you know, Hey, Hey Paul, I, I lost my badge. I, I don't know. I got to figure out who to call. It's that whole chain of events. But if it's, you know, if that app's in your hand, I can just go, hey, I still got the piece of plastic, lost my card, instantly yep. deactivate it myself. Because, you know, most of us don't lose our phones. It's, that take, that's a new level of irresponsibility if you lose your phone. And you keep looking at, well, how else can we benefit the customer? How do we, how does that partnership add value that, you know, takes it past the piece of plastic? Maybe it's, you know, remote work. My check-in is safe. Hey, I'm okay today. Great. Someone on my employer knows mustering is another great example. You know, you think of throughputs. Traditional approach to mustering is always trench a reader out in a parking lot, put it on a pedestal, and everyone, the building blows on fire and we all run out to the parking lot. So we have a throughput issue because there's 500 people trying to badge in the parking lot. Um, we're also hoping we have our badge it's not at our desk. But that whole premise is built on the building, the building that's on fire, that nothing else is compromised. Hey, the access control system's working 100%. Networks are up, no one's cut power. And that to me just is always like, you know, seems strange. So you start to think, oh well, man, I run out of the building and now it's, everything's in the cloud. We're not dependent on a building anymore. And you just open that up and hey, I'm safe. Sarah, oh, and then, or maybe I'm the manager, Sarah's, Sarah's okay, this person's okay. And maybe you did run out without your phone. Maybe you come over to someone else and say, hey, can you also check me in? There's so many more things we can solve for a customer. Bring, again, bringing more people into the ecosystem from a communications perspective, maybe pushing out security bulletins. Right. I really think it's like the, the possibilities are endless. And at the end of the day, what we focus on is how do we bring more value to your customer, to, my, to all of our customers? And I think that's just one of the ways we can do it. So it sounds like you've got some dedicated engineering resources to um, <clears throat> really building out the capabilities of the software application. Is the software application um, that's going to be housing the, the mobile credential also called Keep? Because I know your software is called Keep, or is there a different name for the application itself that sits on the phone? So right now, like our administrative app has been Keep Mobile. So okay. we, we've got a couple of ideas. We don't have an actual name for it yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> Unless you know something I don't know. We've had some ideas that we've thrown around. Keep it simple. Just yeah. keep it. So that's, that's right. Like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so we like going with that, you know, keep mobile, keep plus, keep keep alert, some things like, because keep being our core product. So yes, you know, whether it's keep safe or something like that, or, you know, you know we'll see. Right? Everyone, you know, from couple. what I understand, then we're going from utilizing the MyPass mobile credential, which is, you know, free and it has those limitations like you described, having to manually enter um, the credential into the software. Um, and then when Keep Mobile, let's say, um, uh, completes the engineering effort to completely embed the credential into your software, then we'll have automatic enrollment and you'll have some of these other features that you mentioned, being able to continually build out um, a robust, a robust yeah. effort in your mobile. Um, and that's really exciting for us because having that the, the risk mitigation of putting customers in the cloud and then having you know a, an enriched mobile communication platform is absolutely where it's going. So it's exciting to see that you're on that pulse. Um, I'm going to circle back to uh, talking about some of our mutual customers. Instead, what I want to do while it's on the top of my mind and, it, and sort of lends itself to a next topic: cloud for enterprise, right? Um, yeah. I think maybe the rumor mill has set the expectation like, yes, there's cloud for access control, but it's really better for small to medium businesses. And that's just the way it is. 
why is that a rumor and can you dispel the myths for us and why is Phoenix so great for enterprise access control solutions? Yeah, and I think, you know, if we look back and I think, you know, Brevo being the first in the space and credit to them, they did a really good job of proving, you know, in a stodgy market, there is a space for cloud access control. And I think their original focus and it may have changed over time was those simple, those small, medium, five reader systems because you're eliminating a server and there's a really good return on investment for customers. And it was an easy, and in those cases, there's a lot of that market. It's an easy buying decision. And, you know, that was something we looked at as well and coming out of the, the gate. Those are the easy customers that get. But what Phoenix started looking at is like all of us, all of our backgrounds were enterprise access control. And of course you have all the naysayers. Oh, you can't do this in the cloud, but you know, you kind of ask like, man, you know, our online banking is there. The, the CIA runs payloads in, you know, in gov cloud, everything is there. There's, there's, you have more resources in the cloud than you have in your own data centers. And so we started looking at that sort of that curve of, yeah, SMB is great fit. It's great return on investment. And you can see that like that gain as the more you're asking your access control system to do, you have some additional return on investment in the cloud. But on the other, the flip side of that is, if, you know, for example, you're 500 readers and you're still running, you're still procs, you know, and there's so many of those systems out there. So, and you're on Windows Server 2012 R2. You haven't done a backup in six years. You might not even know what a backup is. Your glorified keyless entry, as, our, as one of our guys, it's Adam and our tech support loves to use that term. We're going to be too expensive and most cloud solutions are going to be too expensive because of, you know, we're going to charge you, we're, we're, you know, every year, just like some, just, you know, like every other sort of SaaS product. But where you start to see that return on investment come back is when we talk about that enterprise space. And as you and I chatted, means something, and it's a little bit different to everyone. It's not just reader count, but you know, where it's resonating with our customers and you see that light in their eyes and you see like them perk up. It's like when they start going, hey, well, we need redundancy. We need geographic failover. How often are you doing, you know, oh, you're doing your backups constantly into multiple locations and what your business continuity process is. And those are all those things they were trying to do in their traditional prem systems, which they can do, but then you're running a small server farm. You know, you have a team of IT doing nothing but maintaining, not getting value out of it, but just maintaining. And what val what is that? What value does that bring to the organization? You know, well, those, you know, those are all those things we're doing: the geographic failover, high availability, business continuity, redundancy, encryption. You know, we know that story. So we're seeing like the two, like that SMB space, and we're you know, a ton of value. And then we're seeing that other end, that enterprise space. Going, you are doing all the things for your small customers that we need to do, you know, that we're, that they're trying to replicate on-prem. So it's neat to see those parts of the market converging. Um, and the same, you know, we're providing that same value to the, the 10 reader systems. We are to the thousand reader system that needs all of those things. So there's no reason you can't do that in the cloud. And, and and I think the cloud is a natural place for those things because you're sharing that cost of redundant servers and high availability and, you know, backups with lots of people. And that's, you know, if that wasn't the case, Amazon and Microsoft and Google wouldn't be building data centers all around the world. You know, we wouldn't be streaming our TV shows. We wouldn't be doing our online banking. Like, yeah. We have to look outside of security and say, why is everything going there? Because it's probably more secure probably better return on investment, better value, better experience for all of us. Like if you think back when we used to have email servers and email be down for a day because you have two IT people maintaining every single system. Those problems have just slowly gone away. Yeah. Oh, I'm hugely biased when it comes to cloud, as you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, let's talk about, let's talk about some success stories. Um, I can think of a few off the top of my head. I'll let you share first, name names if you want. Um, but we have had a few success stories where we've brought the Wavelengths uh, solution together um, under the Phoenix umbrella. Um, you go first. Yeah, so I, we've seen some, it, it's kind of neat because some of our early adopters with cloud were our early adopters with Wavelengths. You know, because it's hard to get people to change behavior. and and you being at Wavelengths and me being at Phoenix, like we're case studies in behavior change, I think. And when we started talking about the, you, know, you start having the conversations, the early adopters, and I have one of mine out in um, Indiana. I think they're, we have even some accounting firms and things like that 
all the way to a big um, New York City housing project. Um, that, you know, actually NYSS in New York with Tips Houses, they've got a case study out about that on their website. I think we got in some specifications. We did a, a library out in Long Island as well. So it's- That's our first hard specification, TM Tech Partners. Um, shout out to Jim Dawson, took, took his first chance on hard specifying a Phoenix system with Wavelinks readers and, and free mobile, I think in that case. Um, available to the Long Island Library. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, and it's, it's you know one of our guys did a really good job of working with them because you know that's and that's another avenue is gaining the trust of the consultants. And I always you know it's like in that market you have to talk about as as much about what you don't do as what you do. Sure, you know, that's what they want to know. It's their reputation on the line when they put you into a, a specification. So we're always really sensitive about that. I'm always you know I talk to our team. I was like. Talking with consultants and engineers, it's, it's not it's not a sales conversation, technology conversation. It's also a weakness, kind of strengths and weaknesses. You have to be open with them. Yeah, setting the expectations. Oh, and of yeah, course, um, starting to see. yeah, sorry. Oh, I just remembered Russ Schmidt from Vegan Wi-Fi. I just had an interview with him. We posted it last week. He did the he's doing these fabulous uh, marina. He's the expert in in providing security and Wi-Fi and now mobile credentials at, at marinas all the way around the world and it's phoenix phoenix software yeah that has been an interesting um time. like i've got to know russ uh geez probably four years ago i think we finally first met at an isc east and we you know one of those people you talk to for for a couple of years on the phone before you had a chance to meet and and even in that market that's a great thing you have some people who want credentials you have some people you know physical credentials, mobile, and, and that's a great space for wavelengths and mixed ecosystem. Some people want the fob on the keychain still. Some Someone wants a card in a wallet and most people just don't want to carry that because, you know, they're still going to carry their phone on the boat. You know, you'll hear, it's always funny. You, you hear so many stories about not wanting mobile credentials. Like, oh, who's going to want, you know, to, they'll be worried about getting their, so like, you're telling me they're not going to bring their phone on a boat? That seems like someplace I'd really want in case I had a problem. <laughs> yeah. But you, you always see that with new technology. It's always looking for excuses on why it can't be adopted rather than the benefits. And it, I think that's just, it's rampant in our industry, but it's nice to see, you know, it, if you think, if you're read the, um, the book Crossing the Chasm, it talks about, you know, the early adopters, the, you know, and the laggards and it's, Sometimes I feel like we're in an industry of laggards, but you know we all we all try to you know, keep marching forward, and learning the new things, and then evangelizing it. And to me, that's what's exciting. You know, if we we're sitting here talking about um, why prox cards and 125 kilohertz were great, like <laughs> it'd be a really sad conversation. <laughs> we prove that nothing had changed, but so it's, yeah. it's refreshing to be able to talk about things that are shifting and changing and. Um, creating better solutions. What can we expect from Phoenix in the future? We came out of a crazy 2020, 2021 has been getting back on our feet and sort of doing what we were supposed to do in 2020. Where's Phoenix going to be? Will you be participating in any events? Uh, we've got ISC West coming up, we've got GSX. What's what's Phoenix planning to do to, to come back out, are you? So, well, one, we're hoping to see you at ISC West. So we'll have a booth out there. We, we did slightly downsize from the original, but it's, you know, I've seen more interest in ISC West. I've seen more chatter recently about people going. Still plenty of people not going who aren't ready to travel yet, but we'll be there. We'll be um, at GSX. Um, and, you know, I think doing just a lot of local events, partnering with our, our reseller partners, um, our OEM partners, and doing some stuff like that. Do you know if you're participating in any Canadian events? I know Canada's, the borders are still closed. I'm going to be back up there in the summer and I just, I know your Canadian headquarters. So, yeah. Um, do you know? So I, you're I think Canasso is still virtual. I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm 90, 90 certain that they're still doing virtual for Canasso for the next one coming up. Okay. Yep, well, I'll definitely see you at ISC West. Um, your sales team has grown. You've got a bunch of new faces on the team. So this is exciting. You're getting ready to, to really make your mark out there in the field. I yeah, it's always trying to find the next new um, team member. That's always, you know, finding the right fit, the right people, and you know, hopefully it'll be a year of expansion or, or continued expansion. 
that's great. Um, well, listen, I think we've sort of covered everything. Like I told you uh, before we started, the whole point of these chats is to really just sort of celebrate our partnership and, and give us the opportunity to share with those, you know, our customers and our channel partners, just to see kind of how we fit together and why there's a benefit to working with our products together. Obviously the advance people making with mobile is it's really going to be so important in the next coming in, well, this year and the next year, the next couple of years. Um, so I'm excited to see what comes next in terms of features and functionality. And I look forward to seeing you in a month out in yeah. sunny Las Vegas. Yeah, same here. Well, other than the 110 degrees it'll be, it'll be great to see you and a lot of our partners and glad you guys convinced us to work with you. <laughs> Me too. It's been a lot of fun and your team is just, you've got a, a great group of people that represent you. So thank you so much for the opportunity and I look forward to catching up with you soon.